What is the importance of knowing God's covenants? 1. Knowledge of God's covenants and the promises connected to His covenants give us great confidence in our prayers. Having a deep understanding of God's covenants provides a solid foundation for virtually every aspect of our walk with God. There are nine biblical covenants initiated by God and directed toward mankind, and each offer rich insight into the promises God has made to us. Knowledge of God's covenants provide us with a basis to receive His blessings and to walk by faith. Understanding God's covenants help us realize how much God loves us, how committed He is to our well-being, and how faithful He will be to us as His covenant partners. There are many benefits to having a deep knowledge of God's covenant promises. A sound understanding of God's covenants and the associated promises greatly enhance our authority in prayer. The following example will help us understand why. We all have heard a person pray for someone who had a serious illness. Many pray something like this, Lord, if it be thy will, heal them. As they pray, they express absolutely no confidence that God will actually heal. Normally little confidence leads to little answers. Although there are times at which we do not know God's will, there are many times when we would know His will if we understood God's covenants and the associated promises. We know that it is God's will to heal, and that divine healing and health are promises made to God's people through covenant. Understanding what He has promised us, and how He has promised us these things through covenant adds great boldness, confidence, and certainty to our prayers. Can I have your attention for a few seconds? Before we delve deep into this video, please help us spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ by supporting our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash You will instantly gain access to over 180 Christian videos and over 400 videos about billionaire biographies and over 140 personal development videos and over 450 verse and quotes images among other goodies. If you are watching this video and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I'll help you do that right now because it is for this very purpose that we create these videos. Giving your life to the Lord is the best decision you can ever make in your entire life on earth. I invite you to make Jesus your Lord today. In Romans 10 verse 9 the Bible says that, If thou confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Please, pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe with all of my heart that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died on the cross, and that on the third day God raised him from the dead. I believe that Jesus is the Lord of my life from this day onward. I'm now born again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well done for making this prayer. You are now born again. Attend a Bible-based church and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and support us on Patreon to keep learning the truth of God's word as you become an excellent Christian every day. Our Patreon page is www.patreon.com slash link is also in the description. Let's continue with our today's topic. 2. A glimpse at the book of Acts illustrates the power of prayers offered in confident knowledge of God's promises. Look at the boldness and confidence of the prayers of the apostles in the book of Acts. They knew their God and the power he had released to them. Their confidence shows in their prayers for those they encountered. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple which is called Beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking to receive alms. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, Look at us. And he began to give them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you, in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, walk. Acts 3 verse 1 to 6. And Acts 9 verse 32 shows the same faith in Peter. Now as Peter was traveling through all those regions, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you, get up and make your bed. Immediately he got up. And all who lived at Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord, Acts 9 verse 32 to 35. 3. When we pray with boldness and confidence, which happens when we know God's covenant promises, the authority in our prayers increases greatly. Although there was great power upon the church of Acts, as we pray with boldness, confidence, and certainty, the authority on our prayers skyrockets, and we see God answer our prayers. In fact, one of the many ways we should learn to pray, covered in session 5, is to remind God of His covenant promises. But for now, know that to be able to remind God of His covenant promises, we must first be familiar with what they are. Then we can storm the gates of heaven asking God to fulfill His word. God is a covenant-making, covenant-keeping God, and as we know this great truth, we will grow in confidence, faith, and boldness to ask Him through prayer, to fulfill His promises to us. The Burden for the Issues 1. The scriptures teach repeatedly that a burden for an issue or issues cause us to pray fervently. Notice what Paul wrote to the Philippian church, For God is my witness, how I long and burden for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. 
and this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent, in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ. Having been filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Philippians 1 verse 8 to 11. Paul loved the people of Philippi, and, because he did, he longed to see them. The longings of his heart for his dear friends motivated his prayers for them. And Jesus' words at Gethsemane, Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter, and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. Matthew 26 verse 36 to 38. Most assuredly, Jesus was deeply burdened by what was to occur in only a few short hours. His deep burden led him to fervent prayer. In both of these instances, the burden over the issue at hand motivated prayer. The same is true for us. A burden for an issue motivates us to pray into that issue. 2. A lack of burden over an issue will allow us to sleep, even to our detriment, while the events involved in the issue transpire. Let's go back for a moment to Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane. While he was grieved almost to the point of death, to the degree that he sweated blood. Even in the midst of his deep grief, his closest followers were asleep. Observe what happened, and he went a little beyond them, and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples, and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, So, you men could not keep watch with me for one hour. Keep watching and praying, that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew 26 verse 39 to 41. Jesus asked his disciples to pray fervently with him in this time of urgency. However, they really did not know what was taking place, that is, they did not know that Jesus was about to take on the sins of the entire world upon himself. Because they did not know what was happening, they did not have an adequate burden to keep them awake. So they slept. In the same way, when we do not have a burden for an issue or an area for prayer, we can easily sleep when the Holy Spirit is crying out for prayer. 3. In essence, the greater the burden, the more fervent will be our prayers. And the more fervent our prayers, the greater authority we will carry in our prayers. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount these famous words, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5 verse 4. Certainly, one application of this powerful verse is that, when we are moved by an issue to the degree that we mourn, that is, cry out, lament, wail, pray fervently, over that issue, then we shall be comforted. But to pray in such a way, we must have a burden for the areas we are to pray for. 4. We can develop a burden for the areas for which we are called to pray. A burden for a sin, a person or people group, for a city or nation, for Israel, or for any issue comes in basically two ways. First, we begin to be burdened for an issue when we hear God's call to pray for that issue. Ken Kessler shares about the call God gave his church for prayer. He states, several years ago, God spoke to our church telling us that we were called to be a house of prayer for all nations. At the time, we spent very little time actually praying beyond the walls of our church. After receiving this call, we began to pursue it. But, as we did, we had no burden for any nation. As a result, our prayer times were not very intense. Then, a few years later, the Lord spoke to us that he was calling us as watchmen for America, and then later as watchmen for Israel. When we knew what our call in prayer was, we began to develop a burden for those areas. However, it was not until we began to teach about the issues facing America, and about the prophetic destiny of Israel, that we really were able to begin to develop a burden and anointing in our call as watchmen. There are many urgent issues to pray for. We must pray for the issues that God puts on our hearts, those issues for which we are called to pray. The second factor that affects our burden to pray is knowledge of the issue. People perish because of a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge causes us to sleep when the enemy is running rampant over a people, city, or nation. Knowledge of an issue increases the burden for that issue. For example, in America, one of the greatest challenges we face is the direction of our Supreme Court. The spiritual battle for our nation is now being waged in our courts. But, until we have knowledge of how the court works, how justices are appointed, how they determine issues that affect our life and religious freedoms, and of the issues themselves, we have no burden to pray. Knowledge in these areas leads to a burden for them. And a burden leads to fervent prayer. Thus, two factors affect our burden for an issue, the call of God, and knowledge of the issues. 5. We can develop a burden for an issue in several ways. Many people receive a burden to pray through dreams, visions, or some other direct communication from God. Many intercessors receive startling dreams of a coming calamity, potential dangers, or a promised move of God. Receiving information in such a way leads to a burden to pray fervently into those areas. A second common way people receive a burden for an issue is through gathering information on the issue. Remembering that specific prayers get specific answers, developing knowledge of an issue enhances our ability to pray. 
As we read the newspaper, watch the news on television, read books on an issue, or gather information on the internet, our burden for the issue grows. As our burden for prayer increases, our authority in prayer grows. There are many ways that our burden for prayer can grow. The primary truth for now is to realize that it is important to do whatever is necessary to develop a burden for the issues for which we are called to pray. Can you please do us a favor? If you have been blessed by this video, please leave a comment, like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel, and invite at least 200 plus souls, it could be family and friends, to visit Discofeth YouTube channel, so that they may hear the gospel of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and be born again. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and support us on Patreon, our Patreon page is www.patreon.com slash Link is also in the description. Thank you and God bless you.